What's up next guys? From the safe to the range with a new Dan Wesson 1911. That review is coming up next. Very accurate, man. Wow. From the Sherlock Security Safe today to the tabletop, this Dan Wesson Kodiak 1911 is chambered in 10 millimeter. This is a very high quality 1911 from Dan Wesson, and we fired 300 rounds of Sig Sauer's Elite Performance ammunition through this 1911 during this test. Actually, was that? Okay. We've got some snow here beginning of December, so we're not gonna be able to throw the magazines on the ground. We're actually gonna have to be able to tuck them in our pocket. Yeah, and that was a, uh, you can see how the slide release actually has hit slightly and it locked back. Uh, I have two more rounds here in the Wilson Combat Mag. Let me get some of this snow off the mag. All right. So there we go. One malfunction during the first mag. That was a Wilson mag. Here's the stock mag, which is like a Delta Elite mag, I believe. There we go. All right, stock mag ran great. Here is a uh, another Wilson combat mag. This could all be just break in too. We'll find out. at that time. All right guys, this semi-custom 1911 from Dan Wesson is machined to perfection. It is all hand fit during its production and it is 100% forged parts, no cast or mem parts in this 1911 at all. Fantastic. The weight of this 1911 comes in at a stout 47 ounces. It's got the rail and it is a six inch barrel. So that means the entire slide is much larger than a government 1911. And with that, you get the added weight. It is gorgeous to look at. There's no doubt about that. I do love the finish. And the look of the grips is pretty dang good too. Not real aggressive, but okay. They have a thin profile to them, so they're not as thick as standard 1911 grips. As you can see right there. The overall quality of this 1911, like most Dan Wessons, was very impressive. All right, guys, here is that Dan Wesson Kodiak in 10 millimeter, a six inch long slide. Our first experience with a six inch long slide ever. So we're starting it out with this Dan Wesson, very beautiful 1911. Here are those Wilson Combat magazines right here. These are all the 10 millimeter mags from Wilson Combat we're gonna be using. And looks like they're called the 47 NX. 10 millimeter they are all nine rounders which is really super cool i thought nine round 10 millimeter magazines from wilson combat so we'll be using these a lot in this uh 10 millimeter here from dan wesson of course sig sauer provides the ammunition thank you very much for that sig appreciate it more shooting to come all right guys the 10 millimeter kodiak let's see how i like it we're gonna try it single-handed fire see what the recoil looks like using just one hand Pretty amazing. All right, we're not gonna dump the magazines in the snow like we normally would because I'm afraid we're gonna lose some here at the beginning of December 2019. Here's another magazine, nine rounds of 10 millimeter. Let's try two hands. Very accurate, man. Wow.
we are our normal 14 yards away from the steel targets. So not very far away, but not very close either. We're shooting on steel. Minimum is 10 yards, we're at 14. All right guys, real quick, I'm gonna cover some of the specifics on this 1911. Look at how tightly fit the slide to frame fitment is back here. It is very well done. Looks really great. Right here you have a very nice high rise beaver tail that's fitted well to the frame. No problems at all with that. Here it is in the back. Just really well done. You have an ambi safety which is wide on both sides as far as the panels. Very nice. The hammer right here is a duty coated hammer so you're not going to have any rust issues like you would on the other Dan Wesson 1911s that aren't coated. So that's very nice to see. Real quick here I want to cover the frame here. You have a very nice high undercut right here to get that higher grip on this 1911 to be able to control the recoil of the 10 millimeter round. You do have 25 lines per inch checkering on the front strap and back strap which the back strap here as far as the mainspring housing is also a magwell. Very nice very high quality magwell mainspring housing on this. And I think all I've got left here, no, that's not true. So I've got V-Crown, I'm gonna save the V-Crown for last. So let's go to regular 10 millimeter SIG ammo again. Elite Performance. Did not go fully forward. Knocked over the steel target. I'm going to go to a different target. And we're good. And here's the last mag here. This is 10 millimeter ammo from SIG V Crown. So we'll see what the V Crown looks like through the 10 millimeter Kodiak. Much less recoil than the much lighter, of course, Glock 20. So if you wanted a 10 millimeter, you like the 1911 style and you wanted less recoil, this would be an option for you if you could yeah. afford it in your budget. Very enjoyable to shoot, guys. A beautiful 1911. A little bit larger than your government size. Quite attractive though, I think. And shot nearly flawlessly for me out of all those mags. I had one that didn't seat completely that I had to tap. But other than that, all the rest of them ran perfect. And those were all the Wilson Combat magazines, which are known to be very good mags, as everyone I think knows by now. So I think we're just experiencing a little bit of a break in on this 10 millimeter Kodiak. Yeah. As young Beretta said before, the dual safety here is pretty fantastic. Look how wide the panels are for both sides. It's also very positive from the shooting position. Very wide panel. Nice to put your thumb on right here. So that is a great ampy safety on the Stan Wesson. This Dan Wesson, just like all Dan Wessons, is a Series 70. As you can see right there, there is no circular metal piece, which is the drop safety you'll find on a Series 80. This one does not have it. Excellent trigger, by the way. Let's talk about the trigger real quick. Firms up right away. It's not moving at all. Let's see if it's got any creep. No. No creep at all, and it breaks. Great reset right there. You're back on the trigger. It's firmed, and it breaks again. I think it's right around five pounds. It might be uh, four and a half. Let me see if I can get a trigger gauge here.
4.19. Pretty excellent. What time is it? It's 10 millimeter time. <laughs> All right, single hand fire. Out of battery. I felt like I was controlling the recoil pretty good. So I don't know if that was a limp wrist or, you know, just didn't have enough inertia to go back into battery. Well, look at the uh, wear happening around the barrel there. See that on the bronze barrel? Just notice that. Yeah. All right. What I'm using here is all Wilson Combat Mags. Man down. In a quick succession. This thing is so fun to shoot and its recoil impulse is so light for a 10 mil. Little failure to feed right there. Actually, I don't know, maybe I locked it up. Yeah, you did, dude. Dead. Yep, that one was you. Which is surprising if it was me because, you know, it is such a minimized control. It's just like a standard GI style slide release. It can happen though. You've got some recoil going on here, even yeah. though it seems a lot easier than a Glock 20. You still got some recoil going on. Nice shooting. I don't remember tipping over all these other steel targets with any other caliber guys. The 10 millimeter packs a punch. So on top of this Dan Wesson DNA Series 70, it does come with a bold barrel type with a cut right here in it. And then the barrel is much thicker than what your normal 45 ACP or even your nine millimeter barrels. I know the nine millimeter barrels are a bit thicker, but I don't think they're quite this thick. So I think Dan Wesson did try to make it a strong barrel for this 10 millimeter round. It is also a bronze-like color to the barrel itself on the finish, as is the finish on all the controls. They're not black either. They're more of a bronze-like color. So you release right here of your safety and your safety over here. It does give it a cool, different look than your normal 45 ACP or 10 millimeter 1911. So Brittis here just covered the controls and how they're bronze. The slide, the frame, the beaver tail, the hammer, as well as the trigger are all duty coated. Real quick here, this is how the duty coat will hold up over time of use. How long have you been carrying this Brittis here? Uh, about four months. Gotcha. And this is the uh, rust on the hammer we were talking about. So if you really look at that hammer, you can see all that rust. That's what happens with the standard non-duty coated hammers. On the Kodiak here, you do have an extended magazine release, which is also bronzed. You have low profile grips, as we mentioned before. You have a fiber optic front sight and a fully adjustable rear sight for both windage and elevation. The rear sight also has serrations on it to reduce glare. Hey guys, we're gonna try the 10 millimeter from a little bit further back here. We got V-Crown in it.
So guys, this Dan Wesson Kodiak does come with two 8-round 10mm magazines from Dan Wesson. We did have more malfunctions with this particular 1911 than any of the other Dan Wessons. Probably as many as all of them combined. So I have 7 or 8 Dan Wesson 1911s and this one tied all the others as far as how many malfunctions it had. They were probably user-induced malfunctions, but it happened with three different shooters, including yourself, Brutus here, so I don't know. You know, it could be break-in. I don't know if I'd agree with all of them being user-induced. I know you had a couple of them, but uh, mine that, that I had were definitely not caused by me. Anyway, we also used the 10 millimeter Wilson Combat mags, and I think the malfunctions diminished, but I think we still had one or two malfunctions with the Wilson Combat Mag. So anyway, guys, to sum it up, we had more malfunctions with this particular Dan Wesson than my other seven or eight Dan Wessons combined. And for those reasons and the price of this coming in at an MSRP of $2,299, we have decided to take a pass on this one and we will be sending it back to Dan Wesson after this video is concluded. I think if it was priced a little bit better and it also had next to zero malfunctions, I think I could very well easily recommend this 1911 in 10 millimeter. But because of the issues we had with it, with not just one shooter, but with three different shooters, and it kind of persisting through the first 300 rounds, I don't think we're gonna take the chance on keeping it. And uh, we are both leaning towards picking up new uh, Les Bear 1911s over this Dan Wesson. So this one is gonna go back, just to be completely honest and upfront, that's where we're at with this one. Your mileage may differ, you may have a 10 millimeter Dan Wesson that is performing flawlessly for you. But for us and our money, because again, we pay for our Dan Wessons, um, it's gonna go back. All right, last rounds here for me. We're loaded up with some Sig V Crown 10 millimeter ammunition. Using Wilson mags, again. Another mag of V-Crown. Oh, I locked it open again. I just have to back off of this a little bit. And then it's fine. It's just every once in a while I'm getting a little bit too close with my finger. Go. It's awesome, man. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching the 10 millimeter review on the Kodiak from Dan Wesson. And thanks for Wilson giving us some good magazines to use with it. As always, everyone, thanks for watching the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Brett and I Millimeter USA, for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future. And please consider supporting us on Patreon. We've got a summer full of shooting coming up in 2020. Take care of yourselves and your family during the coronavirus. And remember, your Second Amendment is worth protecting.